Hi, I'm Mr. Rick, and I will be reading pages 79 to 98. When I awake the next morning, I see a little trunk poking out between the bars of Stella's domain. Hello, says a small, clear voice. I'm Ruby. She waves her trunk. Hello, I say. I'm Ivan. Are you a monkey, Ruby asks. Certainly not. Bob's ears perk up, although his eyes stay closed. He's a gorilla, he says, and I am a dog of a certain heritage. Why did the dog climb your tummy, Ruby asked? Because it's there, Bob murmurs. Is Stella awake, I ask? Aunt Stella's asleep, Ruby says. Her foot is hurting, I think. Ruby turns her head. Her eyes are like Stella's, black and long-lashed, bottomless legs fringed by tall grass. When is breakfast, she asks. Soon, I say, when the mall opens and the workers come. Where, Ruby twists her head in the other direction, where are the other elephants? It's just you and Stella, I say, and for some reason, I feel we have let her down. Are there more of you? Not, I say, at the moment. Ruby picks up a piece of hay and considers it. Do you have a mom and a dad? Well, I used to. Everyone has parents, Bob explains. It's unavoidable. Before the circus, I used to live with my mom and my aunts and my sisters and my cousins, Ruby says. She drops the hay, picks it up, twirls it. They're dead. I don't know what to say. I am not really enjoying this conversation, but I can see that Ruby isn't done talking. To be polite, I say, I'm sorry to hear that, Ruby. Humans killed them, she says. Who else? Bob asks, and then we all fall silent. All morning, Stella strokes Ruby, pats her, smells her. They flap their ears, they rumble and roar. They sway as if they're dancing. Ruby clings to Stella's tail. She slips under Stella's belly. Sometimes they just lean into each other. Their trunks twirl together like jungle vines. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch than any nature show I've ever seen on TV. George and Mac are out by the highway. I can see them through one of my windows. They are next to each other on tall wooden ladders, leaning against the billboard that tells the cars to stop and visit the one and only Ivan, mighty silverback. George has a bucket and a long-handled broom. Mac has pieces of paper. He slaps one against the billboard. George dips the broom into the bucket. He wets the paper with the liquid from the bucket, and somehow the paper stays in place. They put up many pieces before they're done. When they climb down from the ladders, I see that they're, they've added a picture of a little elephant to the billboard. The elephant has a lopsided smile. She is wearing a red hat, and her tail curls like a pig's. She doesn't look like Ruby. She doesn't even look like an elephant. I've only known Ruby one day, and I could have drawn her better. Ruby asks a lot of questions. She says, Ivan, why is your tummy so big? And have you ever seen a green giraffe? And can you get me one of those pink clouds that the humans are eating? When Ruby asks, what is that on your wall? I explain that it's a jungle. She says the flowers have no scent and the waterfall has no water, and the trees have no roots. I'm aware of that, I say. It's art, a picture made with paint. Do you know how to make art, Ruby asks? Yes, I do, I say, and I puff up my chest just a little. I've always been an artist. I love drawing. Why do you love it, Ruby asks. I pause. I never talked to anyone about this before. When I'm drawing a picture, I feel quiet inside. 
Ruby frowns. Quiet is boring. Not always. Ruby scratches the back of her neck with her truck. What do you draw anyway? Bananas mostly. Things in my domain. My drawings sell at the gift store for $25 a piece with a frame. What's a frame, Ruby asks. What's a dollar? What's a gift store? I close my eyes. I'm a little sleepy, Ruby. Have you ever driven a truck, Ruby asks. I don't answer. I then, Ruby asks, can Bob fly? A memory flashes past, surprising me. I think of my father snoring peacefully under the sun while I try every trick I know to wake him. Perhaps I realize he wasn't really such a sound sleeper after all. How's that foot, old girl? George asks Stella. Stella pokes her trunk between the bars. She inspects George's right shirt pocket for the treat he brings her every night without fail. George doesn't always bring me treats. Stella's his favorite, but I don't mind. She's my favorite, too. Stella sees that George's pocket is empty. She gives George a frustrated nudge with her truck, and Julia giggles. Stella moves to George's left pocket and discovers a carrot. Nimbly, she removes it. Matt walks past. Toilet's plugged up in the men's bathroom, he says. Big mess. I'll take care of it. George sighs. Mac turns to leave. Mm. Before you go, Mac, George says, you might want to take a look at Stella's foot. I think it's infected again. Darn thing never does heal upright, Mac rubs his eyes. I'll keep an eye on it. Money's tight, though. Can't be calling the bed every time she sneezes. George strokes Stella's trunk. She inspects his pocket one more time, just in case. Sorry, girl, George says as he watches Mac walk away. Hi, then. Bob? I blink. The dawn sky is a smudge of gray flecked with pink, like a picture drawn with two crayons. I can just make out Ruby in the shadows, waving hello with her trunk. Are you awake? Ruby asks. We are now, says Bob. Aunt Stella's still asleep, and I don't want to wake her, because she said her foot was hurting. But I'm really, really... Ruby pauses for a breath. Really bored? Bob opens one eye. You know what I do when I'm bored? What? Ruby asks eagerly. Bob closes his eye. I sleep. It's a little early, Ruby, I say. I'm used to getting up early. Ruby wraps her trunk around one of the bars on her door. At my old circus, we always got up when it was still dark, and then we had breakfast, and we walked in a circle, and then they chained my feet up, and that really hurt. Ruby falls silent. Instantly, Bob is snoring. Ivan, Ruby asks, do you know any jokes? I especially like jokes about elephants. Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, I heard Mac tell one once, I yawn. Um, how can you tell that an elephant has been in the refrigerator? How? By the footprints in the butter. Ruby doesn't react. I sit up on my elbows, trying not to disturb Bob. Get it? What's a refrigerator, Ruby asks. It's a human thing, a cold box with a door. They put food inside. They put food in the door or food in the box. And is it a big box, Ruby asks, or a little box? I can see this is going to take a while. So I sit up all the way. Bob slides off, grumbling. I reach for my pencil, the one I snapped in half with my teeth. Here, I say, I'll draw you a picture board. In the dim light, it takes me a minute to find a piece of the paper Julia gave me. The page is a little damp and has a smear of something orange on it. I think it's from a tangerine. I try my best to make a refrigerator. The broken pencil is not cooperating, but I do what I can. By the time I'm done, the first streaks of morning sun have appeared in flashy cartoon colors. I 
hold up my picture for Ruby to see. She studies it intently, her head turned, so that one black eye is trained on my drawing. Wow, you made that? Is this the thing you were telling me about before? Art? Sure is. I can draw all kinds of things. I'm especially good at fruit. Could you draw a banana right now? Ruby asked. Absolutely. I turn the paper over and sketch. Wow, Ruby says again in an odd voice when I hold up the page. It looks good enough to eat. She makes a happy, lilting sound, an elephant laugh. It's like the song of a bird I recall from long ago. A tiny yellow bird with a voice like dancing water. Strange, I'd forgotten all about that bird. How she'd wake me every morning at dawn when I was still curled safely in my mother's nest. It's a good feeling, making Ruby laugh. So I draw another picture and another along the edges of the paper. An orange, a candy bar, a carrot. What are you two up to? Stella asks, moaning as she tries to move her sore foot. How are you this morning? I ask. Just feeling my age, Stella says. I'm fine. Ivan is making me pictures, Ruby says, and he told me a joke. I really like Ivan, and Stella. Stella winks at me. Me too, she says. Ivan, want you hear my favorite joke? Ruby asks. I heard it from Maggie. She was one of the giraffes in my old circus. Sure, I say. It goes like this. Ruby clears her throat. <clears throat> what do elephants have that nothing else has? Trunks, I think. But I don't answer because I don't want to ruin Ruby's fun. I don't know, Ruby, I reply. What do elephants have that nothing else has? Baby elephants, Ruby says. Good one, Ruby, I say, watching Stella stroke Ruby's back with her trunk. Good one, Stella says softly. Once I asked Stella if she ever had any babies, she shook her head. I never had the opportunity. You would have made a great mother, I told her. Thank you, Ivan, Stella said, clearly pleased. I like to think so. Having young ones is a big responsibility. You have to teach them how to take mud baths, of course, and emphasize the importance of fiber in their diet. She looked away, contemplating. Elephants are excellent at contemplating. I think the hardest part of being a parent, Stella added after a while, would be keeping your baby safe from harm protecting them. The way silverbacks do in the jungle, I said. Exactly, Stella nodded. You would have been good at protecting too, I said confidently. I'm not so sure, Stella said, gazing at the iron bars surrounding her. I'm not sure at all.